Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to explore the creation of cost centers in SAP S4 HANA using Fiori. I am on the Fiori launchpad and here in the search bar, we will simply type in manage cost centers like that. Click on this application over here and here you can see all the cost centers existing in our system. First of all, over here, you can utilize the filter bar to search for existing cost centers and then you can click on go and all the cost centers according to your filters will be displayed. From this application, you can select one of the existing cost centers. You can either copy one. You can also click on where used. Let's actually do that in all objects. And here we can see that this particular cost center is used in different objects, for instance, in profit centers, work breakdown structures, and also in company codes and so on. We can actually click on this one and here we can find exactly where our cost center was used. Let's go back and back again. We can also click on the change log to see the changes that have been made to a cost center or we can also create a new cost center from scratch or even delete an existing cost center via this button. Let's now actually create a new cost center from scratch by clicking on create. You can see now the window changed a bit. Here on the left hand side we can still see the filters and also the cost centers according to our filters and here on the right hand side we can now create a new cost center. As you can see the controlling area is mandatory because each and every cost center must be assigned to a particular controlling area. By the way, I have another video explaining how to create a controlling area. I will leave you the link in the description of this video. Then you can see over here user responsible. It would be a system user. So this is why you can see over here the search help. For now, we will leave it blank as is. Now we need to give the cost center a certain ID. This is why it's actually quite good to see the overview still over here because now we can scroll down and see how the cost centers have been named. So I'll just call this one 17. 10, which is the company code 1903, like that. By the way, this is actually a best practice to name the cost centers with an ID starting with the company code. Because if we want to create the same cost center in a deviating company code, we can distinguish them by the first four digits over here. Then we have your person responsible. This is actually mandatory and it is a free text field. So this means the person responsible for the cost center. This is a free text field because this person could either exist in the SAP system or it could also be someone who never works with the SAP system, but is responsible from an economical perspective for this cost center. So any person working in your company, let's just say tester like that. Now we need to give the cost center a name as it has a similar ID to this one over here. Let's just say CS LTG unit B US like that. We can even fill a department this cost center is assigned to, but this is also not mandatory. We need to give it a description. Let's just copy this one over here. And then we need, really important, to store a cost center category. So let's actually display the search help over here. And you can see here several different cost center categories. We will just set it to management for now. By the way, whatever cost center category we set over here will control lots of parameters. I will show you in another session. Then we can also provide a validity period. So right now this cost center would be valid indefinitely, but we could also say it should be valid till the end of the year like that. Now we click on organizational units. Here we need to provide a standard hierarchy node for this cost center because each and every cost center must be assigned to a cost center hierarchy. We will just select the standard hierarchy. Then we must select a company code. So 1710 in this instance. And also we have the option to assign this company code to a business area, a profit center or a functional area. As you can see, the functional area over here was already derived by the system. I will now select here a profit center. Let's just say this one over here. Now we click on control. And over here we have several indicators that we can set. And actually here it makes sense to display the search help. So click on this question mark over here and then toggle over those circles. So here you can see record quantity. This means that when we select this option, we can record consumption quantities on postings related to this cost center. Then we have here log primary cost posting, log primary cost planning and log secondary cost posting. So all three of them would prevent us from posting primary costs to this cost center. The same also counts for secondary cost postings as you can see over here. Then you can see log revenue posting. This is actually a default setting and also depends on the cost center category we set. So for the cost center category L we set over here, you can see no revenues 
can be posted to the cost center. Also, you can see over here log commitment updates, meaning that no commitments can be posted for this cost center when utilizing the cost center, for instance, during a purchasing process. Further down, you can also see the budget availability control. So if this cost center should actually be restricted with a budget, so meaning that we can't just post millions of euros or dollars or whatever to this cost center, then we would need to a budget carrying cost center and the budget availability control profile over here, as well as set the budget availability control to act. I will show this in another video. Further down, you can see we can store address information for this cost center, but all of this is optional. Last but not least, you can see also the communication. So for instance, here we can set the language key and some more communication data. And then we can also maintain the cost center in different languages. As you can see, we can maintain here the description for the cost center and the name of the cost center, as well as a long text by clicking on this button over here in different languages, simply by clicking on create. And then we could say here, for instance, let's say Portuguese like that. And then you could give here a deviating name like that. In the end, you can also see the change log and change documents for this cost center. But right now we are creating a new one from scratch. So for sure there is no change log. Now we can click on create and you can see the cost center was created successfully. By the way, you can click here on validity periods and add a new validity period if necessary. So meaning that the cost center can actually store information based on the validity period, let's say from the 1st of January 2025 to the 1st of January 2026. We can say here from which validity period we want the values to be copied from, then click on create. And now you can see all the values we have inserted before, but let's just say that from 2025 on, there's another person responsible. So let's just say tester two, then click on create. And now you can see over here, if we click on validity periods again, there are two validity periods being displayed. And let's just focus here on person responsible. So we set it to tester up until the end of 2024. If we now go to the other period, you can see for this period, the person responsible changed. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.